Cheney et al. 2004, Funhaler Study. Background. The developmental approach to psychology has often been focused on how children's behaviour is shaped by learning, particularly from their environment. Numerous theories, techniques and methods have been developed and tested, which ostensibly aim to enhance and encourage new behaviours. One of the earliest and arguably most significant advances made in this field was operant conditioning, which is a form of behaviour reinforcement. This method involves providing a positive stimulus, i.e. a reward, to a person or animal when they manifest voluntary behaviour that the rewarder wants to encourage, which then results in positive reinforcement of that behaviour and increases the likelihood of that behaviour reoccurring. The technique has been used in many areas of everyday life, from programmes that help people quit smoking by offering rewards to its members, to medical professionals and therapists providing incentives to patients to adhere to medication. The researchers in this study wanted to apply the principles of behaviour reinforcement and operant conditioning to improve the adherence of children who had asthma in using their inhalers. AIM The study aimed to investigate whether the use of a novel asthma spacer device named the Funhaler, which incorporates incentive toys, could lead to improved adherence to using an inhaler in children with asthma through positive reinforcement. Sample a total of 32 children with asthma participated in the study, consisting of 22 boys and 10 girls, all of whom lived in Australia. The participants' ages ranged between 1.5 to 6 years old, with a mean age of 3.2 years. The average duration that the children had asthma before taking part in the study was 2.2 years. The participants were recruited via a volunteer sample, with information or consent given by the children's parents to take part. The parents also participated in the study, by completing questionnaires regarding their children's adherence to the treatment and helping to administer the asthma medication. Methodology The study was a field experiment which used a repeated measures design. All of the data was gathered at participants' homes. The independent variables used in the experiment included whether a child used a standard small volume inhaler, called a Brefatec inhaler, or whether they used a Funhaler. The dependent variable was the level of adherence by the children to the treatment, i.e. how much they use their inhaler or funhaler. This was self-reported by the children's parents. Procedure Before the experiment was conducted, the researchers analysed the two devices used in the experiment, the standard Brefatec inhaler and the funhaler, to ensure that the aerosol output was the same. This was an important control measure, since any differences in the amount of air output from the two devices could have contributed to a difference in the children's adherence to the treatment, rather than the intended independent variables. Overall, no significant differences in aerosol output were measured, meaning that the two devices were ideal for use in the experiment. The Funhaler delivers treatment to the user in exactly the same way as the standard inhaler, except it includes a number of additional features that make it more appealing to children. It incorporates incentive toys, such as a whistle or spinner, which are separate to the main inhalation circuit to prevent interference with the drug delivery. This design also enables the incentive toy module to be replaced by new toys to help prevent boredom. The researchers visited participants and their parents at their homes prior to being given the Funhaler to collect data via a questionnaire about their existing use of their inhaler. After this, participants were given the Funhaler to use for two weeks and their parents reported their children's adherence to using the device via one random phone call during the duration of the study. This involved telling the researchers whether their child had used the Funhaler the previous day. The Funhaler was then swapped for the standard Brefatec inhaler and the process was repeated, with parents reporting on their children's adherence via one random phone call with the researchers. After the sequential use of both the Funhaler and the standard inhaler, the participants were again visited by the researchers and the parents were interviewed and completed a matched questionnaire about how easy each device was to use, the compliance of the parents and children, and their attitude towards the treatment. Results The main finding from the study was that the Funhaler led to a significant increase in adherence to the asthma treatment amongst the children. The phone surveys that were conducted at random during the study found that 38% of participants were reported to have used the Funhaler the previous day, compared with the standard inhaler device. A further 60% of children took the recommended four or more cycles per aerosol delivery when they used the Funhaler compared with the standard inhaler. A significantly higher number of parents reported that they were always successful in administering the Funhaler, 73%, compared with the standard inhaler, just 10%. Conclusions The researchers' main conclusion was that the use of the Funhaler may be useful for encouraging children with asthma to adhere to treatment through positive reinforcement, 
The results supported the premise that behaviourist techniques, such as operant conditioning, can be successfully used to improve children's adherence to drug delivery. The findings suggest that more widespread use of the funhaler could possibly lead to improved clinical outcomes for asthma treatment amongst children. In addition, the researchers posited whether this could also apply for other areas of medical treatment, using functional incentive devices similar to the funhaler to improve additional areas of children's health. Evaluations The study was a field experiment which took place at the participants' own houses. This meant that the experience was high in ecological validity, since it was investigating behaviour which occurs regularly in real life. This also makes the study very useful, since these findings suggest that the Funhaler device could encourage significantly improved rates of adherence to asthma treatment amongst children, and may also suggest that techniques which use positive reinforcement could improve adherence to other medical regimes. In addition, the researchers ensured that both the Funhaler and the standard inhaler were matched in their level of aerosol output to ensure that this variable would not interfere with the experiment. This improves the study's internal validity. The study was also highly replicable, since the exact models of the inhaler were specified, the Funhaler and the Breathatec inhaler, which makes it easier for future researchers to repeat the experiment. However, one weakness of this research was the limited sample that was used. There were only a total of 32 participants who took part, meaning that one could question how representative and generalizable the results are to a wider population. The participants were also all drawn from a relatively small area, meaning that the study could be considered ethnocentric. In addition, it's very possible that extraneous variables such as demand characteristics and social desirability could have come into play in relation to how the data was gathered. All of the data was self-reported by the participants' parents, who may have overestimated the child's adherence to the treatment, either due to unintentional mistake or because they didn't want to appear as bad parents. It's possible the parents may have also purposefully made more of an effort to encourage their children to adhere to using the funhaler in order not to appear bad or neglectful to the researchers.